<laughs> but look, obviously God comes from religion. Yeah, I think basically the question is that, for example, where does the concept of God comes from? And whether religion was uh, came first and then the concept of God came or whether there was first the concept of God and then, you know, so how the concept of religion. So how about you simplify this question? You're basically asking Raza that what, how have religions and gods come about? Okay. Basically, they want to have an understanding of, uh, you know, why the need for a religion, why the need for a God and how they have historically you were quite right in saying that men had problems. Isn't that what you were saying? That men had problems. Yeah. So they were looking for solutions to their problems. Particularly problems they could not possibly address themselves with their own thinking or doing. So those unsolved problems gave rise to the concept of the a God and a God who is connected to human beings and their lives and all nature, but principally the people and their lives. Uh, and obviously it's God by definition means that God is predominant. God is primary and men are secondary. Human beings are secondary and he can control their affairs for better or for worse. So when you pray to God for yourself, you also pray to God for against your enemies and you want God to destroy your enemies and defend you. So isn't that the situation which produced religions in God? When you have a religion, you have to have a God. Religion means a connection between God and man. So we, let us assume that there is a God and there are men and their problems. So God is a product of the connection between unsolved problems and men. Men have unsolved problems to which they do not have solutions themselves. So they come up with a solution. And then God, by its very definition, cannot be limited just to human beings and their problems. To God, in order to be God, has to be a God of all time and all space, all nature. Isn't that true? And when there is such a God, then he has to have a system of governance. Because God then governs all nature and in all time. Isn't that right? All gods have that magnitude, that dimension. So he has to have a system and that system then becomes religion. And of course there are middlemen who are experts in that system. Among Muslims they are called Mulvis or Mullahs. Among Christians they are called priests. And among Jews, they are called uh, rabbis. rabbis, etc. So there are then men who, human beings, by whatever name you call them, who have expert knowledge of God's systems in dealing with all nature and all time, and they being an interconnect between individuals and God and God's system. Am I painting a reasonable picture of religion and God or not? 
I why am I asking you is that if you have some different ideas, I would like to share them. No, you're right. Yeah, it's completely making sense. If you have any other ideas, I would be very. No, I guess I. I mean, what you're saying makes sense because uh, we were just thinking about this thing that you know uh, since. uh earlier times when the mind was not that evolved people don't didn't have you know uh science and technology were not that prevalent people used to have faith in uh things without you know actually having proof of anything right ah. so we were just uh, thinking uh along those lines that you know whether maybe god came first or religion came first i think you're right religion is basically just a connection between man and god and ah. god is like the main concept right over here So yeah, it makes and sense. And God's concept is not a discovery of God as a thing. Take stone, take water, take sunlight, take fire. Fire was in fact a discovery it's in anthropology. It is in history it is recorded the discovery of fire. Then there are stones, and you make tools out of stone. these things are discovered so the question is was god something like stone like water or like fire which man discovered no god was not a thing by definition god is not a thing god the, the, the common definition of god in all religions is that he is the master and the authority over all time and all space and including the affairs of men <coughs> is a master of the affairs of men and everything else is that right yes is that the common yes. um yes. definition of god So God was an idea, not as a thing which is which was discovered. So God was a, if I may say, if you like, I can say intellectual, or if you like, I can say mental. But it was a mental solution to a problem. Very interesting. Very interesting. Men had problems. with the weather with each other with disease with money men have not the problem in their life don't they some problems they, they were able to tackle and then they had specialists like um um some people who were experts in agriculture some people who were experts in um um, um herbs so they became hakims or vedas hmm so they had specialist men and up to a point they could solve problems but they could not solve all the problems or when i say problem you can change the word uh, wishes for problem all that they wished and wanted they could not yeah. achieve from the intimacy of human beings mm. so they come up with a solution to so god is was not created by man as a creation god was man's solution to his problems an idea of the of the existence of a power and authority which was omnipotent but then god had to connect to human beings in order to be relevant supposing there was a god and he had no connection with human beings would he not be relevant to human beings but we are talking of a god who is very relevant 
That means he is very well connected yeah. to human beings. So that's where religion comes in. The connection, the elaborate, when the connection is elaborated. Very well, sir. Makes a lot of sense. What do you do to get connected to God favorably? What do you do to get God to unfavorably connect to your enemies? Etc. What do you do to connect God favorably to you after your death? And what do you do to connect yourself to God about the child who is pregnant and you want it to be a male and not a female? You are praying for a son? Etc. Etc. Now I want your your own thing. So so basically, my my understanding is such that religion uh, from the start on every, every base, basically religion is based on faith, right? That is the core, uh, I guess, basis of religion, right? It's faith. It's not logical in that way that we can see something, we can you know see it with our own eyes at the existence of God and everything. There is no direct proof, right? It's all based on faith. Every major religion that we see today, it, even religion of the past, the, the the core value, I guess, it's it's having faith that ah. you know the God exists and you know there is a life here after and everything. We don't have any direct proof of that. We just need to have faith that this is how it's going to be, right? Correct. And as opposed to this, um, in modern times we see that you know science and technology, uh, they kind of take over that. Uh, need of having faith knowledge of technology by giving application knowledge. of technology takes over that role huh? yeah, more so. and more what you are seeing is that man has been from the beginning he has been he has had the ability to discover and to invent isn't that right yes. for example he discovered and invented words language the history of civilization, I think, begins with the beginning of language. language yes. So it is man who discovered language, not God. Had there been, had God discovered the language, there would have been one language for all human beings. Very well said. In fact, there are lots of languages. All people have their own languages. That means man did not follow one route, all human beings did not follow one route to discover language. Mm. Mm. Different people in different times, in different places discovered language. Languages and hence different languages. Different languages. Mm. And then they discovered other things. Mm. Now, every time you discover something, you rely upon your discovery rather than God. Exactly. If somebody falls ill, somebody has um, a disease, if he has a medicine for it, he takes the medicine. Yeah. He doesn't go to the mul mullah. Yes. But if he doesn't have the money for the medicine or does not have the medicine, then he does go to a mullah. Hmm. Isn't that right? Or make a prayer to God. Hmm. Yeah. So when a man falls ill, he his first choice is to go to a doctor. True. And his second choice is to go to God. Is that true or not true? True. 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 In the case of illness, if you can't get help from doctor, mm. then you go to God. Religion. God means yeah. religion. Yeah. Because there is no direct access to God. Mm. Yeah. Nobody has a direct connection to God. Even prophets said that they, an angel came to deliver the message. Isn't that right? Mm. Wow. Mm. 
so god doesn't directly except on the day of judgment but not during lifetime mm. Mm. so this is very interesting what you're saying that basically the more we progress the more i guess sort of control we have uh, the more understanding we have and of our universe for god there is less room for god or a higher power because you know we have that control and the less you know the more the room for god mm. yeah mm. so lot of sense so if you can solve your problem you don't need we don't need you don't go that your first choice mm. Naturally. If you can't solve your problem, then your second choice is God. God. Mm. Mm. 